All right, let's keep it going. Give one more round of applause, and we'll jump into some questions here. All right, first question. John is grabbing somebody over there, uh, and then uh, just say your Hello. name. Hello. Leo Goldstein from DeFiCCC.com. A question to Steve. Uh, when did the uh, EPA start to operate the gas chamber? <laughs> oh. Well, I think EPA has uh, been running its gas chamber, I believe, since the 1990s. As I said, is, they do more than just particulate matter. They've been doing ozone experiments. Um, they're, they're very creative in the tri experiments they try to run, trying to show there is some harm from various air pollutants. I mean, the most shocking one, I think, was the chlorine gas. I mean, that was a World War I weapon. The EPA <laughs> is, you know, testing on college students, really appalling. Um, there, at the Heartland Policy Bot, there's a, there's a link to an affidavit under oath to a court, a, a federal district court in eastern Virginia, related to the lawsuit that, that um, Steve was talking about. And Dr. Robert Devlin, the senior scientist for the EPA on human experiments, they actually have a division of human experiments. Hmm. He talks about the fact that he had written more than 50 papers related to human experiments that went back for a long time. And we're not, so we're talking at least 15, 20 years. It's, it, this is well, not something that started a few years ago. They've been at it for a long time. The only reason that we found out about it was they were stupid enough to publish a, a case report, which is really not a very good journal article in the first place, on this lady about her developing atrial fibrillation flutter in a chamber at 40 minutes when she was scheduled to go two hours. And we found out that it was a lousy study reported in a lousy way, but that's what got the bulldog going. And he found out about all the research that they've been doing, and then the lawsuit was filed, and these people admitted what they were doing under oath. This is like a Perry Mason moment. <laughs> you should read the affidavits. There is a doctor, a physician, who says there were 10 domestic medical schools that were doing it. There were six foreign medical schools that were doing it. They've been doing it for a long time. Dr. Robert Devlin says, I've been doing it. Hey, this has been my career. After I got my PhD at Virginia, I went to work for the EPA, and I've been doing human research for the last 20 years. I guess that's what Dr. Mengele said. I was doing human research. Okay, back of the room. Um, my name is Alan Carpy, and I recently retired from EPA. Um, one of the things, and I, I don't want to be putting uh, Steve Malloy on, uh, uh, on the spot here, but one thing that I'm finding that is bothering me is why don't we have people like Steve Malloy or Myron Ebel working, getting into EPA. The only way you're going to be changing this agency is from the inside, not the outside. And I would really like to see people like Steve or Myron uh, 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 Horner from CEI. Those are the people we need at EPA, and why not? Well, so that's, that's very kind of you. I appreciate that, and thank you. My, my wife is right next, next door to you, so you can... <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> No, yeah, you raise a great question, and uh, Myron, uh, Chris, and myself, we were on the EPA transition team, and I think we drafted a great plan for fixing EPA, and uh, we're just going to have to see whether the EPA administrator implements it. I hope he does. Cool. Hi, guys. My name is Graham. I'm with CFACT, and uh, I'm kind of piggybacking on what this gentleman said earlier. It seems that the we don't know anyone, you know, a damn case as far as this stuff. We have the information. We presented the science. It's real science. And these guys should be tried and seriously called out for human rights violations. And I guess my question is, at what point are we going to start really calling it for what it is, the monsters that they are, and blow the lid off that jackass festival over there? So. Well, no, you're right. I mean, uh, in, in North Carolina, well, as in every state, you have to, doctors have to get patients' consent informed consent. And the EPA physicians who are doing these experiments and telling their, their patients, oh, don't worry about this, there's, there's, there's nothing, there's no big deal, just to, you know, maybe you'll cough, <laughs> and that'll be it. But 
uh, the rest of you know the rest of the time they're telling everyone that uh, you know they're you know PM 2.5 2.5 is going to kill you. Um, there's something wrong there. I mean, those people have either committed a felony or the agency is lying to everybody else. And as I said, I don't know what's so interesting over there, but I, this is, you know, this is provable corruption and fraud by an agency that I, I worked in the coal industry for a number of years that destroyed 94% of the equity in the coal industry, has issued some of the most expensive regulations. Um, you know, it's difficult to get interest in Congress. I mean, there's been some interest. Uh, you know, it's a long story. There was an EPA inspector general investigation on this that was launched by, you know, I got Congress and, e and they forced EPA into it. Uh, EPA didn't contact me for four years until Trump won. When Trump won, all of a sudden I hear from EPA, we'd like to talk with you about these experiments. I, I, and I wrote a letter to all of the physicians who were in the Congress. Believe it or not, there were 18 physicians in the, in the Congress at that time. I wrote a letter detailing everything about this human experiment scandal. How many answers do you think I got? None. Absolutely none. And the, I wrote to the deans of the medical schools, all the medical schools in the United States, 10 medical schools, asked them to please respond to my request that they look into this matter because their schools were involved in, one, unethical behavior, to fraudulent research that would subject them to the Lincoln Law, which is a, a demand that you refund the money that you took from the government to do these research projects. Now, one thing I would like to make sure that you understand before we leave here, it isn't about informed consent. That's what the National Research Council of the National Academy of Sciences investigative committee is trying to say, well, it's kind of about consent, and maybe they didn't get very good consent. We got to, but you know, there was nothing wrong with it. The rule is this, the Nuremberg Code says you cannot do research on human beings that might cause them harm. And guess what? The US law, the common code says the same thing. This is illegal. It's felonious activity by a U.S. agency. It's a scandal that will not go away. But guess what? The Congress wasn't interested. And you should have heard the fumbling effort on the part of a member of a committee of the House when Gina McCarthy was sitting there and he tried to ask a question about human experiments. I mean, it was a joke. Now, think about this. We got lawyers that are hired to work for the government so that they can frame questions that will make damn sure that you get your investigation done. And that's the best we've gotten out of congressional committees so far, is one stupid question. And Gina McCarthy, who's not really that smart, she slapped that question away so fast. I mean, Malloy was just flabbergasted by the fact that the, the doctor, this is a physician who is the chair of a subcommittee, and he can't ask a question about human experimentation? That was really shocking. You know, I mean, we're talking about oh. Tuskegee. Yeah. We're talking about Nuremberg. And, and, and just to put the uh, icing on the cake there, so the, the uh, part of the House Science Committee wanted to hold a hearing, and, you know, John was going to testify, and I had uh, a woman who is a Holocaust survivor who runs uh, the Association for Human Research Protection. And she was going to testify, but they canceled the, had the House canceled the hearing because EPA said they wouldn't show up. So here's so. all they have to do. They just have to say, go to hell. We're a US agency. We can do what we want. Yeah. That's how bad it's gotten. Right. And, so, and that goes back to that Mengele slide. And the more we do to you, the less you can give, we're give them another chance, you. somebody else a chance to ask. This comes under the, the heading right hand, left hand, not knowing what, he, what the other one is doing. And uh, what I did is I went into um, OSHA to see what the effects on human life, uh, lithium hydride and lithium oxide have on people. The short term exposure is confusion. I guess that's why people vote for Democrats. Then you go into a coma and then you die. Now that's the short-term exposure. Mm -hmm. I looked up long-term exposure. 
Apparently there are no results because nobody survives the short-term <laughs> exposure. So we're getting in airplanes with these lithium hydride, lithium oxide uh, batteries in them, which is a sealed tube flying through the air and people who are highly trained on, on operating airplanes reach around and switch off the uh, locator. And then they fly for until they run out of fuel and crash into the ocean. So just there you go. an observation. Question mark. <laughs> Question mark. Question mark. Up right up front. Up front. Hey, physician. <laughs> well, I mean, what, what it, all of these human experiments require uh, ethics committee approval where I come from, and they well, probably do here what, too. Right. Um, the other thing you can do is complain to the the license the licensing agency well, of the state okay, of these there, physicians. Hey, let me take this. I talked <laughs> I talked I talked to the senior assistant to the dean of the University of North Carolina School of Medicine. I said, "What are you going to do about these human experiments that are being done in your university school of medicine?" And she said, "Well, we'll take a look." But they didn't do well, anything. So to answer your question about the institutional review boards. All these experiments have to be approved by an institutional review board. Of course, EPA doesn't tell the institutional review board that it tells everybody else that PM 2.5 is deadly. And since all these you know, institutional review board positions are mostly ceremonial, honorary to start with, there's no investigation. So EPA says there's no problem. Uh, the reviewers review the application, which says there's no problem, so everything's okay. It all, you, I no, will, so we I did. Will. So we did. So I filed a complaint with the North Carolina Medical Board because in North Carolina, I, you know, I had clear <laughs> law as a felony, and so they investigated and then they came back and no explanation, just said we're not going to do this. And they did it in record time. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't and, like they. And I also filed in Michigan because the uh, the one doctor I, I just briefly showed the slide, Robert Brook from the University of Michigan. I complained about him too. Uh, also, we're not going to look into this, no explanation. Now, the other thing that you want to consider is maybe they aren't willing to say anything about this because they don't want to turn down that money. Yeah. And if you think that a well-educated physician wouldn't be aware of the fact that the EPA claims that small particulates are killing people, yeah. you've got to be pretty yeah. naive. These, these I, I don't think there's any excuse for what the universities did. They were just basically taking the money and doing what the EPA told them to do. These experiments are quite lucrative. Each university gets about $8 million, Harvard, University of Rochester, University of Michigan, University of Washington, uh, USC, UCLA. It's, it's very lucrative. Ohio State, University yeah. of New Mexico, Rutgers. University of North Carolina, Rochester. It's very lucrative for them. It's good money. It's good money. That's why Ike said the research government complex is a very dangerous. Well, imagine EPA employees idling a diesel truck and then pumping the exhaust into a gas chamber. I don't know. It's just there's something wrong with that. <laughs> well, they take the carbon monoxide. They, they process it. Take the carbon monoxide out. Concentrate the particles. I mean, they process it. Otherwise, they'd kill the people. I mean, they. <laughs> but th what they're trying to do is they're trying to cause some adverse health effect that they can say, "See, we, we can extrapolate this to death, and there, this is, you know, why 600,000 people here die." That's the reason why they jumped on such a lousy piece of a case report right. on a 57-year-old lady with a cardiac arrhythmia. They just, you know, they're dying to show something that they can say is the, is caused by air pollution. Okay, let's move to the next question. So how can anybody write a history of the interconnection between the universities, the governments, the, F, uh, <laughs> the EPA, the DOE, the White House? <laughs> this is a good start. I, I tell you what. Good start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got one in their bag, so enjoy. <laughs> All right, next question. And you can get it signed by them tomorrow. Well, no, I, mean, I, mean, I just want to answer that because, well, the, the book is about more than just EPA because with the human experiments, uh, we went to uh, the Office of Scientific Integrity at Department of Health and Human Services, the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, the Presidential Commission on Bioethics, the North Carolina Medical Board, the Michigan. We went to, we went to a lot of people trying to get people interested in this, and of course, you know, all the, I mean, they just. I they told was, you he was a bulldog. I mean, and, and it's, a, it's, all, it's all documented in here, and they never wanted to respond. I mean, the one guy that responded, uh, I, you know, was, he accidentally sent me an email 
And his, his response was, holy cow! Like he knew there was something wrong, but then he was shut down. And I mean, it, it's really, it's an appalling situation. We're, we, uh, we, we were investigating this whole thing and we did get the response of the EPA. They referred it to the National Academy of Sciences and the National Research Council, which does the work of the National Academy of Sciences. They basically do the contract work. They have 400 contracts, most of them with the government. 16 people were assigned to the investigative committee that was going to look into the EPA human experiments. And we found out late that all of these public committee meetings that were supposed to be held never got held. We saw the portfolio. It said there were 50 submissions by the EPA none by anybody else. We were never contacted. We insisted on a chance to enter a submission list of things that we wanted them to review as the investigative committee. So, consider this. The Bulldog looked into the financial arrangements for the members, the 16 members of the National Research Council investigative committee that was supposed to decide whether the EPA is doing bad human experiments. We found out that you can measure it in terms of tens of millions of dollars. How many of these members of this committee are already getting EPA money? Now how much do you think you could bet on whether they're going to say something bad about the EPA's conduct in regards to human experiments. All right, so we have time for one, maybe two one more, more questions. One more question. Um, but right. those, I'm sure you guys will be around if people have questions. Yep, okay. absolutely. Dr. John, tomorrow yeah. you have a clean shot. Dr. John Barrasso is going to be here. He's the chairman of the Environment and Poli uh, Environmental Policy Committee, uh, EVW. Of course. You got a shot. He's going to be here tomorrow. Hand him the letter and request the hearing. Now, my other question is, uh, Jim, is your stuff ready to go to submit on the record? Because what Steve said at the outset, the endpoints for endangerment finding are PM and ozone. Social cost of carbon, PM and, o and ozone. Clean power plant, PM. So we need to put your stuff on the record officially so that the agency now populated by hopefully our friends will understand they got to take this thing on. Are you ready to go? The paper is uh, supposed to come out um, next week. That's what I've been told by the uh, publisher. And uh, it's available um, in the sort of final version before it goes into the journal. And so essentially the answer is yes. Um, and we certainly have made a request now, I said two weeks ago, to HEI to, to confirm my findings. And so far, they've refused to even respond to me. And I think we have a, a paper trail that goes back really 20 years that we can work on. And uh, I believe there's a tremendous amount of deception and corruption going on in the epidemiology. And I'm only speaking about the epidemiology. As far as the letter to Dr. Barrasso, um, Dr. Barrasso was in the Congress when I sent the letters. He got the letter originally. Uh, he probably said, this isn't a constituent, I'm not interested, or whatever. Who knows? Maybe a staffer just threw it away because they said, this is a kook doctor. I don't know. But <laughs> the fact is, I kept, I kept the letters. I can, I can reproduce that Barrasso letter just like I can re reproduce all the letters that I sent to the deans of the medical schools, which never got answered either. So, yeah, we could. That would be good. I'm, I'm happy. To, I'm so happy about what happened on November eighth. You just cannot imagine. I All mean, right. I think a lot of us share that sentiment. So let's give a round of applause for our speakers.